It feels extremely weird to be filming a video with my face in it. Am I too zoomed in? Can you see too much of my face? Is that better? I don't know. <coughs> It's my channel's first birthday, so I bought myself a little a little cake. Hi, it's Sylvie. Welcome or welcome back to Tarot Magpie. I hope you are doing good. I have a face. Who knew? Um, I thought I would bring myself on camera today to film my one year channel anniversary Q&A video because otherwise it's just a lot of me waving my hands about, which I think is not particularly thrilling viewing. Not that I think my face is necessarily thrilling viewing, but at least it's something new. Tara Magpie's a year old. I've uploaded I think a hundred videos. This might be video 100 or this might be 101. So Tara Magpie is an Equinox baby. I uploaded my first video on March 19th, 2023. This video is going up on March 20th, 2024, so I'm a year and a day old. So instead of rambling on about how much I love this YouTube channel and I'm proud of it and it has exceeded what I thought it would become, I'm just gonna get straight into the questions because I think that is one of the questions. So I put a little call out for questions on my Instagram and on my YouTube community tab, post, thing, um, and you'll deliver it. I have some questions to answer and I hope this isn't gonna be a million hours long, but no promises. Firstly, uh, Rowan here asks, do you use certain decks for hyper specific jobs that mean you don't just reach for them casually? And if so, could we get an example? If not, does anything come close to that? So I think the closest is, I'm so unprepared for this. Where are you? I think it's over there somewhere. The closest thing to that is the Reclaim Oracle, which um, I did a whole video about this recently, so go watch that. It was my tarot for tough times, tarot when I'm feeling vulnerable and squishy, something like that, I will link it. But I spoke about how I used the Reclaim Oracle in that video because the Reclaim Oracle is a feelings deck and I mostly use that exclusively to kind of sort out my own feelings. So I use it when I'm feeling a little bit anxious, a little bit vulnerable, a little bit not sure what I'm feeling. I will just flip through the whole deck. I think it's 90 or 100 cards. I'll pull out what feels like it resonates. And then once I've gone through the whole deck, I'll go back to the little pile of cards that I pulled out. And then I will sit with those for a little bit longer. I'll think about which feelings feel appropriate to what I'm feeling. I really like that deck because there are so many cards. So there's a lot of words that seem very similar but kind of sorting through them and being being a bit um like picky with what I'm feeling or just getting more specific. Helps me figure out what I'm feeling. I've said the word feeling too many times. It's lost all meaning, but that deck, I pretty much only use in that way. Sometimes I use it as like a traditional oracle just because it's interesting, but because it's feelings and emotions, it doesn't read in the same way that a lot of oracle decks do, or at least how I read them. So that one's pretty specific. In terms of tarot, no. <laughs> no, not really. In terms of tarot, I definitely have, like, decks have vibes and different, like, energies that um, I think are better suited for different kinds of readings, but I don't have anything that I use exclusively in one kind of reading or for one kind of situation, I don't think. So, so no. But the Reclaim Oracle is pretty close. Imogen of Sapling Tarot asked me a couple of questions. Um, how do you choose and plan the content you make? So in terms of planning, I, I'm very scheduled in this, in this way. Like I have my Wednesday and my Sunday videos. Occasionally I'll do like a bonus Friday video. Um, if I just have a lot of shit to say, which is all the time. Um, but I have a notion situation. I've got like a calendar so I can move things around and plan ahead. And I've got basically a, is it a Kanban board? Where I've got like these are my video ideas and then the ones that I'm like kind of turning into a thing so if I feel like I want to make some bullet points and like semi script it out or what decks I want to gather for that video or like whatever and then which ones I'm editing and which ones are uploaded and finished so um I have like a million ideas and how do you choose the content you're gonna make um I look at YouTube like a lot of what I do is like tags 
so I just kind of will be watching YouTube and then want to film a response to a video so that just goes in the list. I have a big long long list most of which will probably never see the light of day, some of which are getting transformed into blog posts, cheeky little plug, go read my blog, um, and yeah, I really like making YouTube content, it's really fun, I really enjoy it, so I, I like getting into the, into a bit of like a nitty gritty process with planning it, um, but yeah, I just, I have a lot of stuff to say, I talk a lot, as is no surprise to anyone who is, who has been with me for however much of the last year uh, so I just I have a lot of stuff to talk about and that's what this is was that a helpful answer I'm not sure yeah I have a notion where I dump all my ideas and then I kind of every couple of weeks will sit down and have like a video planning evening or whatever and I will flesh out some of those ideas and stick them in the calendar and then film and edit as I have the time and energy to do so and then Imogen also asked, I don't know if you've covered this in a video, but what's your criteria for choosing a deck? This is actually a video that I want to make. It's been sitting in my ideas list for forever. And I kind of keep looking at it and realizing I don't really have strict criteria for which deck to choose. Well, I'm now just having a brain cell. Um, I'm assuming this means like, choosing a deck to purchase or like deciding whether or not to purchase a deck which is a video that I wanted to make and realized I don't have really strict criteria for it and um, the only thing that I do get a bit strict about is can I visualize the cards in a spread and how they will read together which is kind of an abstract thing and I'm never really gonna know until I get it in front of me but this is where like walkthroughs are really helpful because I can see people pulling cards and doing sample readings and then I can kind of gauge whether or not I think it would talk to me or not. Um, as for like choosing a deck to read with on any given day, it's all vibes. Like I do a lot of seasonal deck collection videos or just here's a, a vibe deck collection videos. I love to, I love to curate and collect. Um, it's why I have so many tarot decks in the first place. But sometimes I'll be like, okay, I wanna do, like if it's like a time of year, then I have my go-to, like right now I'm looking at my spring basket, which I think is the last video I put up, of the decks that I'm gonna that feel springy and that I want to focus on working with for spring, so I often will grab one of those, and if none of those feel quite right, I just, I have all my decks in a little trolley under here, which you can't see, and they're all quite accessible. I don't have to dig for any of them, they're not like in storage, except for like my Christmas and my Halloween decks, which I will pull out at the relevant time of year, but um, I just look at them and see what I feel like working with. There's a lot of planning that goes into my content. <laughs> There's not so much planning that goes into my practice. Or, um, not planning, but deliberate thought. Okay, Kelly of, of Kelly Bear. I will link everybody's, like, channels below if people have all Instagram things. I will try. I will try. Um, but Kelly asked... If you could pick a tarot to use as inspiration for your nails, which one would it be and why? Or have you always u already used tarot as inspiration for your nails? No, I haven't, but this is so fun and I kind of wish I had thought ahead and done this for today's video. Um, the Eldritch Overload would be fun inspiration based on the art style because it's like pink and purple and brightly coloured and sparkly, but like holographic. I could so do some like rainbow sparkly with like holographic something on them that would be really fun I would also because I bang on about the Queen of Swords all the time uh, it's it's the Libra card it's my significator in that sense and it's also kind of the card I resonate quite a lot with the Queen of Swords and um, I would quite like to do like a Queen of Swords themed set of nails I think that could be really fun with like the blues and the metallics but also the butterflies and maybe like a little hint of red in there like from the Rider Waite Smith Queen of Swords. Next time I actually sit down and do a, a full set of nails when I have like a whole evening and two movies to watch. Okay next question is from Nina Nana. I'd like to know how you use tarot in your everyday life. So, is it close enough? Yes. I have my everyday practice in my tarot journal. I've got a couple of videos, I'll link them below. So I have my, like, look how cute. Um, 
I have a daily pull with like a study deck. This was Navigator's Tower of the Mystic Sea for Aquarius season. I just pull a card a day, I read the guidebook, which is more of a study practice. As for everyday readings, I will also like cheeky plug the little zine that I made of my everyday three card drawers. Uh, that is on my Etsy for the low, low price of £2.50. My everyday readings are usually kind of what's the vibe, what should I focus on, lessons, something to embody, like that kind of thing. Uh, but recently I've been doing a bit of a practice using the uh, 365 towel book and kind of coming up with a question based on the daily meditations. I absolutely copied Sasha who has a video on how she does that so I will try to remember to link that as well. I've been really enjoying that because it's a little bit more meaningful and I feel like I get more out of my everyday practice and I'm less likely to skip it. Although saying that, today's Wednesday, I have not yet done a daily reading this week, but life is a bit chaotic at the moment. So that's my like daily basics. And then I do like bigger, more in depth spreads and questions, just kind of on a as needed basis. When I have something, if something's been rattling around in my brain that, that feels like it needs a bit of a decision or that I need to move forward with, I will usually pull some cards on it, depending on what it is. Like if it's an anxiety thing, I just try and leave that alone. But if it's like, I need to take steps and I'm not quite sure where to go. And it's like, if I want a second opinion, basically I will pull tarot because I think that's why tarot is most useful for me personally. Yeah, tarot is a really good like additional perspective. And that's how I explain tarot to people who are a bit skeptical actually, um, when I tell them that I do tarot readings they're like oh so you can tell the future I'm like no I can just give you an additional perspective and I think that's where tarot is most practically useful is in kind of giving you something to bounce your ideas off and reflect stuff back at you it's like a very neutral third party and that's how I use it most in my like daily life. Right, Tegan at Cosmic Creeper has asked I'd love to hear your reflections on one year having a channel if anything's changed, how it's been. Um, my reflections on when you're having a channel. Basically, I'm so glad that I started this channel and that I started making tarot videos and uploading them. Basically, I made the channel because I was already in my head. Like whenever a tag was going around, I would like be responding. I would just only ever put it in my head or like maybe I'd write down like a list of decks. And so I started the channel to just put that out there. Um, and I enjoy the whole process. I like planning my videos. I like editing my videos. I like having conversations in the comments. Um, it's also, I had no real plan when I was, when I started Tarot Magpie and uploaded my first video. I was just like, I wanna make friends and say things. And I feel like I've achieved both of those goals. Um, but also it's, it's spurred me to like, I have started a blog where I've started putting I have even more to say. I swore I would never go back to Instagram, but I'm on Instagram and I'm actually really enjoying it at the moment. I also have an Etsy shop where like I've got my little zine on there. She's cute. <laughs> um, and I've got plans for like more of that kind of thing that I want to put on Etsy maybe. Um, I come up with loads of spreads and I connect loads of things and I'm like, I, I write all this down anyway. Like I have, a, have my Notion, which I do video planning on, but I also have like an Obsidian which is a fantastic note taking app if that's your bag. Um, but I just have so much shit that I've like come up with or read somewhere and then Obsidian is really good at connecting ideas. So I have basically the draft of a bunch of different like, like workbooky, small ebooky type things. And I'm like, I would like to actually make those into something and put them out there, which is not something I ever considered like I could do before I started my channel and actually engaged with other people about tarot because I was I was just me in my bedroom with my weird little hobby that nobody in real life cared about or understood. And since starting my channel and like making friends and having conversations, I'm like, no, it's it's been very validating. That's what I'm getting at. Um it's been very validating to be on 
tarot tube and not feel like a weirdo, <laughs> basically. <laughs> I'm like, no, other people have the same intense hobby as me and it's great and we are all just nerding out about tarot together. I love it. I also think there's a lot to be said for the process of verbalizing my thoughts that I wasn't doing before I was filming it. I feel like I pay attention to the thoughts I have about tarot cards more when I'm saying them out loud and especially doing, this is why I do unboxings so much is because the process of going through and like flipping through a deck for the first time and then saying the things I notice or the ideas I'm having out loud and then also watching that back when I edit it kind of solidifies them in my brain a little bit more and I feel like the decks that I've done that with have a little bit more of like a personality or I feel a bit more connected to them especially if they have like a unique take on the tarot more so than when I wasn't filming or like the decks that I haven't filmed a walkthrough with um so like that's really cool and that's something I didn't like expect before I started doing it overall it's just it's led to some really cool expansion in the way that I do tarot and think about the tarot cards as well as just being so much fun and like I say I wanted to talk about tarot which I achieve and like make tarot friends which I also feel like I'm achieving so that's really cool I'm really glad that I started my YouTube channel and it's kind of kicked off some other really cool things that like I would never have felt like I had any right this is silly um it's the imposter syndrome talking but I would not have felt like I had any right to like make a tarot spread zine and put it online if I didn't have kind of this community engagement it's been very validating have I said that already quite possibly I think I'm talking in circles so I'm gonna, I'm gonna move on. Artist in Love has asked, how did you get into tarot? And I don't really have a very distinct or interesting answer for this, I'm afraid. I feel like a lot of people have very cool tarot origin stories. I am 90% sure, I probably had an awareness of tarot in like the cultural consciousness, but I'm 90% sure that where I actually first came across it was on Tumblr <laughs> in like, I don't know, 2012 or something. Um, probably even earlier than that actually. So that's where I first kind of came across it. I started learning tarot just online. Like I was learning tarot before I had a tarot deck. It's not the way I would recommend doing it, but um, I didn't feel able to get a deck for a long time because the people that I lived with would have been, or I felt they would have been weird and judgy and made me feel weird and uncomfortable so I just didn't get a physical deck for a really long time then I did kind of learn tarot through I hate to say it through like the witchy tumblr of like 2012 um it was a time <laughs> I think that's where I came across it and where I got like interested in it and where I probably started learning things I did use other resources and I think this is another question a little bit further down um but yeah, it was it was Tumblr, which is so not cool. <laughs> Mermaid's Dreams Tarot asked me a couple questions on Instagram. Uh, what is one deck you will never ever buy and why? I know there are decks that I have no interest in, but I'm also really contrary. Like for so long I said, oh, the wild unknown is not for me. I'm not like other girls. I don't need this super popular deck. And then last year I got myself the little mini tin edition and I really love it. It's a really good deck that I really enjoy using so I was wrong. I feel like I'm picking on a specific deck. The Light Seekers Tarot. The Light Seekers, the Light Seers. Light, Light Seers Tarot, right? It's another one that's really popular and that everybody seems to love um, but I know I'm not gonna get that one because from the off, like the first time I saw it, I was just like, mm, I don't think this is for me. I feel mean, I feel like I'm picking on it. I don't think it's, a, I have no real opinion on the deck. I'm not saying it's a bad deck. I just have, I know that it's not for me. And then since it's been out, I realized that the reason it's not for me is because it's too people-y, it's got too many facial expressions. And also I don't like how it, and I get the vibe of it is because it's the light seers. I think it's a little bit more on the like positive spin, light worky side. I just don't like the take on a lot of the cards because I want my decks to be a little more doom and gloom. It feels more honest. <laughs> um, yeah, it's pretty, but the unfolding path didn't work for me, and I think that one's prettier than the light seers, so there's no chance of me getting it. And then also, if you could create any tarot or oracle deck, what would you like to make? Um, I'm in the process of making an oracle deck, 
it's very loosey goosey. <laughs> um, it's okay. So I actually have. I've, I've, there's lots of things I want to make. I am bursting with ideas, how good they are or not is up for debate, but I, I have loads of ideas of things that I want to try and I have like most of an oracle deck I've been slowly adding ideas to, so like keywords and titles and things that I would really like to read in like an oracle deck. Um, and then I finally sat down to actually make some art for this Oracle deck and like it was completely dead. I couldn't come up with anything. So that's kind of on the back burner. Instead, I am kind of intuitively making art for, for what I hope will become an Oracle deck. It's, how would I describe it? There's a couple of pictures on Instagram, I think. So that's the vibe, but it's, I suppose it's like it's collage and it's like found text maybe like I'm taking I'm I'm taking words and putting them together to make phrases that I think sound cool like it's really not that intricate but um I'm really liking what I'm coming up with and hopefully I will turn that into an oracle deck whether it's just for myself or more broad who knows but um, we'll see how that goes. I would love to make a tarot deck, but that's just because I like making things. I'm not sure that I have a particularly, at least at this point in time, I don't think I have a particularly unique or special vision for the tarot that I would want to create. I just would like to make a tarot deck because I think that would be cool. So that's something that I would like to do, but I haven't yet hit on how I would want to present it and how I would want to frame the tarot cards. It makes like 78 cards is a lot and I definitely have, there's like ideas in my brain of like, oh, if I was gonna make a deck, this is how I would show the hanged man or whatever, but none of that's cohesive. So it's marinating in my brain. One day maybe it will turn into something. Tara at Cozy Court Craft has asked, what are you most passionate about regarding tarot specifically? And I am sure that I have put this in a video before. It might have been the five W's tag because that I did fairly recently. It was like January, I think. So I will find that I will link it so that I'm not completely repeating myself. I think the thing I am most passionate about with tarot is it comes down to the archetypes of it all. Like I love structures, I love systems, and I love that tarot is a framework of these different archetypes. So like, that's one thing. Like, I like that it's a system and a structure. But what I think is so cool about it is the way that it is constantly evolving. The framework is constantly being like reconstructed, like on an individual level, everyone has their own interpretation of the 78 cards. And then on like a broader, like collective level, for instance, like I have thoughts about the Hierophant and there's, they're working away. There's a blog post or something in there. But um, I think the Hierophant, what it used to represent when it was like the Pope was structure and religion. But what that means to us now is very different. So like, it's that kind of evolution of the meaning of that card and how it's being like reconstructed over time. Cause I think now it represents like spirituality which is not necessarily the same thing as religion. And religion is that kind of structure and hierarchy. And like, it's a bit more complex because we have broadly speaking, changed what religion means. Does that make any sense? Like I say, it's marinating, it's percolating. There will be a something at some point because I have thoughts, but um, all that to say, the thing I'm most passionate about with the tarot is the fact that it is this kind of constantly evolving framework. It's not a static thing. Like we still use the 78 cards that have always been the 78 cards of the tarot, but they mean something very different in today's social cultural context, like whatever that is for every individual. All of that to say, the thing that I am most passionate about with the tarot is the fact that it's not static. It's like this collective storytelling that is constantly evolving because the archetypes and what they represent and then how we interpret them, which I think are two different things, uh, that's constantly changing and is different for every individual. And then every time we interact with a new deck or read a different guidebook or get a reading from someone or just like be tarot nerds on the internet, 
chatting about what we think the hierophant means. It's like changing and restructuring that meaning constantly. Like it's constantly shifting. I think it's so cool. <laughs> Taro never sits still and I love that about it. And I think that's probably like frustrating for some people. I think it's very cool the fact that you can't just memorize a set of keywords and be done with it because the context you're reading for is gonna be changing. What those keywords mean is constantly gonna be changing. So like it's, it's all shifty and nothing is discrete and concrete and I love that. I don't think we've done too badly. This isn't too, too long. Uh, finally, final question. Uh, Claudia Berger. I don't know why I've put my laptop so far away so that I can't read people's usernames, um, but has asked, when did you start getting into tarot and how did you go about learning the cards? So I should have smushed this together with the earlier question. Tumblr. <laughs> Tumblr was, was, was the when and the where. Um, I promise you I did fairly quickly move to other resources. Like I just did a lot of like Google searching. I was like learning the cards without having the cards. I don't know, I was like, I have that thing where I'm like, oh, I can't do something unless I already know how to do it, which is frustrating to say the least. But so there was like a weird mental block in my head. I was like, oh, I can't get a tarot deck until I know what the cards mean. Would not recommend, silly way to learn the cards. But um, I did a lot of Google searching. I remember there were a few apps, like I remember the Lab Labyrinthos, Labyrinthos and I think the Mystic Mondays, they were apps that would like random, like they would give you a random pull. So that was how I did a lot of my like daily readings before I had a real deck was using those apps. And then I had like notebooks and whatever digital note taking, note, note -taking system I was using at that time. And I was like building my little library of meanings and keywords and interpretations and things. The cards were a lot easier to learn once I actually had a deck, unsurprisingly. Um, and I think what really helped me solidify or feel like I really understood them rather than just like having that kind of flashcard keyword, fool means new beginnings, and that's all there is to it, um, was pulling more than one card at a time. I know a lot of the advice is a daily single card draw, which is good for familiar familiarizing yourself with the cards, I think. Um, like I can now, like you say, seven of pentacles, and I can instantly see that card in my mind. Um, the right away smith anyway like i know what the seven of pentacles looks like and that kind of daily practice of a single card was good to familiarize myself with that but pulling more than one card at once helped me actually understand them because then the cards are talking to each other and you can kind of pull out those connections between them between the cards and also between the cards and you and your context that you know the question you're reading for or like whatever the case may be which help put the card meanings into like real terms for me in a way that just like pulling the four of swords and then looking at the meaning that didn't really do much for me in terms of like understanding and contextualizing the cards and being able to like read them together is the main thing i think that's where probably a lot of people really struggle with is like yeah you can learn all the keywords and the elements and what have you in the numerology but then when you're pulling a card of a spread of multiple cards it's like okay so what do the three of cups and the ten of pentacles mean together in this context so finding ways to like draw those connections out and make meaning out of the cards by how they connect to each other that was that was how i actually really learned the cards so is that helpful i don't know um also practice just the longer i've worked with the cards the better i've got at it i think and that's true for anything. And it's a bit of a boring answer, but but it's true. I think particularly because tarot is so experiential, that may not be the right use of that word, but you read experiences in the cards, um, like daily experiences, big life altering things. Like the longer you practice reading the cards, the more you're gonna connect tarot to real life. And I think that is something that you can only get with time. My voice is going, I've been at this for a while, so. I'm gonna leave you there because that was the final question. Um, these were really fun to answer. I got to get real nerdy about like systems thinking, which I thoroughly enjoy. So thank you for that. Uh, thank you to everybody who asked me a question or wished the channel a happy birthday. Um, I can't believe it's been a year in a way. Yeah, I'm not gonna get too soppy and sentimental about it. I've, this is a long enough video already, but um, massive, massive thank you to everybody who has 
joined me on Tarot Magpie, who has watched videos, commented, subscribed, all that good stuff. Um, it's grown a lot faster than I expected or anticipated when I first started uploading videos. Obviously I wanted people to watch my stuff, that's why I put it on a public platform, but I am a little bit, what's the word? I don't know, it's just incredibly cool. I think I'm at 1600 something subscribers right now and that's just, that's so many people. And I did not anticipate it growing this quickly. And it's extremely cool to me that people like what I have to say. So thank you so, so much. I love this channel. I love Tarot Magpie. I love the ways I'm expanding it and I hope I will continue to do so. Hopefully I'll be making videos for years to come. And so massive, massive thank you and massive yay, my baby is one year old. I'm gonna leave it there. Thank you so much for watching. If you stuck with me this far, I hope you've enjoyed. Uh, give me a like if you liked it, subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye. Now I get to eat cake. I don't think I even really like red velvet. This is a red velvet cupcake because that's what they had, but I'm not gonna turn it down. I also bought a whole pack of birthday candles just to be cute on YouTube, <laughs> but I feel like these would make really good little spell candles because they burn really quickly. I know I got the red velvet hype. It's pretty. It just tastes like cake. It's a very tall cupcake. I feel like I have to unhinge my jaw like a snake to actually get it in.